Official One Piece podcast. We're here with Ian Sinclair. We're going to chat today, so why don't we get started? I can't do it with one hand. There we go. Ah, nice. Almost. Mm. Mm. Might I say, to One Piece. To One Piece. To one, piece. Yes. one Piece. And to those at home, to One Piece. See you all. All right. I don't even know where to begin because there's just, there's so much to talk about. I don't. Oh, I drank so much. Uh, oh. no. <laughs> well, this is a pretty big deal because you're a, you're not just any One Piece character. You're the new Straw Hat. I'm a Straw Hat. Dude. Yeah, not too many people get to say that because there's only a certain amount of main characters. Dude, it, it blew my mind, and I, I I kept I kept like calling people once once I got the the final okay because I didn't get the final okay until the Japanese had approved so we already recorded Strong World and they had to submit it like a month after we did Strong World and then like then I got the no they like you and it was just like that day I just called I'm a straw hat I'm a straw hat and I got a fro and it's awesome yeah it's um it the meaning is not lost on me. It does mean a lot. It's 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 really cool, and I, I take a lot of pride in that. And and when I w- started rewatching all of it, cause I, as I told y'all, I've restarted it at one. And so like, when we were watching a uh, Strong World yesterday, I was I was looking at the screen, going, "Oh crap! Now I'm talking. I am. I'm talking to Luffy. Ah, <laughs> look at that! Ah, ah, it was just so cool. It was. It's it's a cool feeling. Yeah, you you were pretty uh, fidgety. I was busy <laughs> and nervous and yeah, but it th- th- it's a great movie. I really yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah. If you could for us, uh, just talk a little bit, a little bit about the casting process and what it was like getting in, into the into the cast. Um, well, it was. I don't know if I would say it was by by invite, but a bunch of us got um, emails from Mike, the, uh, Mike McFarland, the director. Hey, Mike, you rock so hard. Um, and, and so I got it and I was like, okay, all right. And I saw, I saw the picture and then I started doing research and I kind of got, oh, 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 he's, he's the new straw hat. And then I got, and then I started watching all of it and I got, I got really nervous cause he's, he's, he's a very dynamic character. Cause you know, in one second he'll be talking about something and he'll be very sad and, and low pitched. And then the next minute, kind of like, that breaks my heart. Oh, but I don't have a heart. <laughs> Yeah, and like did the voice. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, he's so so. I didn't know what to do, and then I, I, w- I wanted to try to sound like the Japanese, and I and I and I I just spent all weekend doing that, and I worked on the laugh, and the first time I saw it and I heard the laugh, I did it, and I was like, okay, I'm close. I need to work on it, but I'm close, and so I spent the weekend doing that because it's a very specific laugh, and I didn't want it. Uh, some some people like to make the laughs their own, but I felt like it was an iconic one. So you know, it's, it's like yeah. you, you got you got to do it because I guarantee you, in that first clip, if I had come out and go yo ho ho, <laughs> I would have been murdered like the second I stepped out, man. And so I was like, no, I'm gonna I'm really gonna try to bring it like the Japanese guy did. Uh, Cho, I believe his name yes, is. Yes. Dude, he's so good. Mm-hmm. And he, that, is he a singer over there? Like, cause he's his breath control is amazing. Right. I think from what you told me, from what Greg said, our buddy yeah, in Japan, he isn't. No. <laughs> He's not a singer. No. His diaphragmatic control is astounding. Like, I'm going to tell you right now, as somebody who does those yo-ho-hos, doing a 10-second yo-ho-ho is freaking hard. <laughs> and it's something that, like, I won't necessarily get on the first take. It'll take a few, but, like, it's getting easier and easier now because now it's... Uh, it's actually tied in my brain to joy. Like, cause when I get really happy now, I'll Yo! like, it's, my girlfriend hates it, but you know, uh, yeah, it's fun. Uh, speaking of uh, singing, that's a major po- uh, part of Brock's yes, story. He is the musician. So mm-hmm. I know in Strong World, you got to sing Crawley <laughs> Davids. Crawley Davids. I like that one because here uh, at this, we were, we were doing that one, but he was, he was jostled, so he's like, Crawley! <laughs> so that, that's yeah, that one sounds weird, and it made me laugh. Um, 
I used to actually, uh, before I was a voice actor, I thought I was going to be a, that's, I thought I was going to be a musician. Like, I, I've been in bands since I was 13, and um, I used to, uh, like, my first job out of college was playing in a jazz group, and now, now nobody remembers that for me, but, and so that's kind of cool. I get to tie back to, you know, something that was like my, my, it was me, I was, I'm a musician, and then I was like, I'm gonna get to sing, and it's it's intimidating because he's a hell of a singer, and I cannot wait for um. Uh, well, hopefully, I'm gonna be doing Brook once uh, for as long as we would do um, the the song New World. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like oh, I can't wait because that's that's just gonna rock, and I'm. Uh, and now, like, I, if I'm having a good day, I do kind of like. <laughs> yeah. I'm the humming voice actor now. <laughs> um, take it back to uh, when you're talking about the auditions. Mike sent out emails. Was it? Oh yeah, I'm ADD. Was, <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's fine. Um, no, it's not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, were there emails just for? Oh, hey, we're doing the One Piece movie, or was it? Hey, we're doing a Straw Hat. This is a big deal. It was. Hey, I think I'm thinking that he sent it out to guys that he thought you know he could do it and um a lot of my friends got it and i it was intimidating as heck because i knew that you know all of the big names would be going for it and i just you know i said i'm gonna try my darndest and i really thought i wouldn't get it and then my agent called and i had to, i kept going what what and then she was like what are, what are you doing and I go, oh this is this is me crapping myself with joy i just want you to know that if you if you want to know what ian sounds like like that this is it and they're like oh okay is it a good part and i'm like i'll I'll be doing it for, yes, yes, it's a, it's a great part, thank you, when am I booking? Um, and then I freaked out and watched all of his episodes, all the episodes I could get through in time and all the thriller bark and just, and then I wanted to watch it a few times and that is a longer arc than I thought. I was like, that'll be 10, 12, ep no, it's like 50 or something like that. How many episodes is it? Like, about 35. 35! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, so I, I went through those, and then I really wanted to understand how the English voice actors treat uh, their characters, and then I watched back through, and I got to see everybody joining and, and all that, and yeah, but it was, it was just an email, and I had no idea, and I was just like, oh, this is another group of character, but then, then you look it up, and you know, and... Um, I was on my way home to do that, and I was hanging out uh, with my buddy Austin Tindall, who also was auditioning for it, and he was, I was like, what's going on? He goes, I'm freaking out. And he was like, did you get the email? I'm like, oh yeah, I was going to go check that out when I got home. He's like, dude, dude, you don't even know. And, and, and so I, I had that bit of extra nervous fear going into it, but, um, you know, you put your head down, you come up with a voice, and you go for it, and yo-ho, you know. So uh, with what you saw in Thriller Bark, um, I guess, what are your thoughts of that arc, and more specifically, what are your thoughts about Book's uh, backstory? I love it. I love it. Uh, the Laboon thing, you know, that's so sad and beautiful, and I'm really glad that, because uh, when they were when he was talking about Laboon, I didn't, it didn't click, and then I started back on one, and I went through, and then when we got to Laboon, I started freaking out, and just like... <laughs> no, that whale, that whale. That's that's lovely. But it's a boom. And uh, I love I love the arc though. The uh, Ryuma, the, his his shadow. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. That fight is gonna be really intense to do. Like to to yell and 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 finding voices for for Ryuma is yeah. slightly. Yeah, you got the voice in too. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a lot of fun. And. Uh, yeah, the yo ho ho screaming at each other psychotically is oh, so much fun. I, I, I really like the arc. Uh, it's it's beautifully dark and silly, and I love Hogback and uh, <laughs> stuff with Sindri, uh, Shindri. And uh, it's it's a cool one, and I, I, I like how. I mean, he it's it's such a. It's cool I, I, seeing him freak out about the zombies, and he's just, even though he is a scary looking dude, he's, he's just a scared guy and he just wants to do that. And I think it's really cool that his humming is because he's scared. <laughs> I think that's just so cool. Because I get that, you, you have to have what you can to make yourself strong. And, uh, oh my, one of my favorite parts is when he goes to Hogback and he's like, either you give me back my shadow or I'm going to put fish all over this island. And he's like, fish, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, what else could it be? Maybe the salt? And he's like, salt? No, 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 it's, not. it's salt! <laughs> like, that's so funny. I, I should just say, just before we continue, and not to knock on anyone else we've uh, that we've interviewed in the past, but 
to talk with you and for you to be a fan of One Piece and be so into it. Uh, I'm having a good time right now. <laughs> I, I was about to toast with the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, I mean... We're happy to have you on board. Thanks. I should have been suspicious when you said, like, oh, I started watching One Piece. I'm like, oh, that's very nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah should've, should've I did. Should have known better. I was, uh, I was in the, we had recorded me, but I wasn't officially Brooke when we were doing the... Um, the, the the One Piece marathon, uh, oh, the yes. animation yeah. one. And yeah, so that's why I was like, I want to go and sit with him and do that. And I was just watching and I was like, oh, I got to be social. <laughs> oh, it's so cool. And and it's, it's really a cool thing to be. I'm glad that I got into it as much as I did because when you're into it and you ask, you know, uh, Nami, can I see your panties? That's funny. That's extra. That's an extra level of like, like when you get to when you be a, be a big fan of something, and then you like, oh no, I I get to talk to Luffy. I I do. That's that's neat. That's neat. Because uh, uh, everything else that I've done is you know you you start out and you, it's a new thing and 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 you're creating new characters and all that. But with One Piece, you are a part of such a huge world. Huge. That was very. It's very uh, Donald Trump. He's very huge. <laughs> um, this huge, this mythos and this, this world that is so deep and textured and so many levels. And um, and I know some people just think it's just really silly, but I, I, the, the main characters are such good actors, and everything else is crazy and silly around them because they're at the Grand Line. Things are weird there, <laughs> and and to be a part of that weirdness, and yet as. Uh, as a straw hat, you there's so much, so many levels. And Mike and I talked a lot about this when we were doing it. The straw hats have to have this huge emotional range because they go through so much. So we wanted to make sure that, like, I mean, Brooke, Brooke goes from all the stuff up here, and oh, when he's really happy, and there's that, and then all oh, sad, and, and then you know, sometimes, and then other times, would it be all right if I saw your panties? Yeah, like, <laughs> like, like, I want him to have, and he, and he has total full range, and. Rage, joy, love, hate, perv, everything. Like this, this dude is. This dude's got it all, and it's it's really cool. I love this guy. Yeah, I was gonna say. Um, you're talking about how the universe is just so expansive. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go back to what you were saying about Laboon, where he's introduced so early on, and then yeah, later on. And I mean, it kind of expands throughout all of Oda's works. Like Ryuma was from one of Oda's short stories that he did. No kidding. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> the, the, the legendary great swordsman. Yeah. One of his other things. That's <laughs> awesome. He, he, he did kind of, let's say that. He did, he, he basically did write the legend. It was, the short story is like a fairy tale from the world of One Piece, basically. Oh, I read that. But um, speaking more about Brooke, um, sort of how do you take into account his sort of physicality when you record, and actually how do you feel about how old he actually is in the story? He's like, what, 70 something? Yeah, right? Um, I, that, that I like, but he's, he's still, I mean, he's still, mentally where he was when he died um except well no you know what i'll take that back he's that but then he's gone through the trauma of being so alone and that's why when you first see him he's like hi people i haven't had a conversation in so long and he was the, in i think he was like the first character ever that uh when luffy asked do you want to join my crew he was like yeah he's like okay yeah. yeah i gotta go take care of stuff you guys are awesome they'll buy you um, yes. <laughs> what about physicality? Oh, physicality. Oh, I, I'm, I learn a lot of my technique I learn from watching Tatum and some other people, and they're, they're very physical people, so when I go in there, I'm, I'm very flaily. Um, <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's fun because when you get, when you throw yourself into that, there's, you can really hear some of the intricacies of that kind of stuff, but, um, and, and when we, um, when Mike wants to make sure I'm very proper in a moment, I will take his stance and I'll hold it. Uh, I brought in a cane once, just to, you know, to have a little. Oh, hello. How are you? Or I'll kind of feel like this as I'm doing it, and it, and it adds just a little uh, another layer. Uh, I love it. I love, I love that he's 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 crazy cartoony and all over the place, and and he's hilarious, and so it, it constantly presents challenges to to. Uh, to be fresh, um, to justify all of your reads, to to make sure that that you really do you know all that humor justice because I mean it's it's hilarious in Japanese and you got to make it hilarious in English and it, and that's that takes work that takes work. 
Uh, so we asked this for uh, Colleen. Okay. And I want I want to ask it for you. Um, I don't know how far you are in the series, but one thirty. Uh, so uh, where would you like to see Brooke go? What would you like to see Brooke do? Well, I need to get back to Laboon at some point. Um, I think it'd be cool. Hmm. I. Ooh, what if he would? What if he like did get his skin back for like for a while? <laughs> like because right now he does have that kind of like, oh, I feel awkward in public a little bit. Uh, hi, and oh, when Frankie said that, uh, I was like, you know, if you go out in public, people are gonna be scared of you. And he's like, yeah, but blah 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 blah. I mean, I I think I think that that would be a cool like, what would he do? And and uh, I don't know. He's just so happy to be with everybody. <laughs> I, I was I was skipping around. Sometimes I get on Hulu and I just skip around. And if I see like a picture of Brooke on the One Piece episode, I'll like I'll be like, okay, this one has Brooke in it, and I watch it. I watched. Um, he was building a snowman, and he got into a fight with a torso. And <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I love that. It was a great episode. And I'm I'm watching, and he's just like, ah, snow. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, he's he's so happy and nice, and I like I love that about him. He has this, he has this beautiful innocent, um, and that's why him and Luffy are just sitting t uh, together joyously laughing all the time. I don't know, I don't know. I want him to I want him to get him back to to Laboon. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's gonna be that's gonna be a tearjerker. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I hope you don't mind because I kind of had some questions. They don't really relate to Brooke. They relate to some of the other characters you played in one piece. Uh, probably the most important, uh, Ian, the pirate. <laughs> <laughs> I got that role because my name is Ian. Yeah. <laughs> they were really, they were like, <laughs> his name is Ian, so I cast you. I'm like, no, I, I remember when you told us that, and I, I, that was one set that I bought really late, and I only watched that arc once, so I completely forgot that character. I was like, what the hell is he talking about? And then when I finally watched it, I was like, oh, it's funny. Okay. His name is Ian, too. Skypea, right? Uh, no, it was, um, it was before Skypea. It was a little filler arc uh, in between Alabasta and Skypea. Oh, I'm almost to me. Yes. That's funny. You're pretty close. I just finished Alabasta. They're feasting. Yes. I think I'm at one point. As they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Feasting and bathing, I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, you know, I used to say, oh, Toriko would beat Luffy hands down in an eating contest. <laughs> I'm starting to wonder, man. <laughs> like, I mean, Toriko gets stronger by all of his eating, so of course he can just keep pounding food, and the only reason he stops eating is because it's bad within the gourmet world to do that. Mm -hmm. But Luffy, man, he can put away some food, dude. It's that stretchy stomach. Oh, that's fine. You got any more meat? <laughs> like, I like you. I was, somebody... I remember uh, like a year and a half ago, someone was talking, I was talking about food or something, and they would go, holy crap, you are like a real life Luffy. And I went, okay, cool. And now, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's really nice. Because he's like, ah, adventure, pirates, woo! I love Luffy. And the fact that that comes out of Colleen is mind blowing. And every, I, I, sometimes when I hear her scream, I just go, oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's a lady screaming that loud. Have you had to scream like that yet? Uh, Toriko was the most. Uh, no, see, the cool thing with Brooke is it is screaming in a completely different part of my voice. Mm. Um, Toriko scream <laughs> vibrates there. Mm. Brooke scream, hold that down. <laughs> <laughs> like it's all up here. And so because of that, I bypass my vocal cords and it's easier for me to scream as Brooke than it is for uh, me and other things. And he screams like a little, like that was less girly than most of my Brooke screams. He, <laughs> he screams like a lady. Uh, speaking of Toriko, there are some uh, episodes where it's a One Piece and Toriko crossover. So how do you think those would be to record just with like the different characters being Toriko and also being Brooke? That'd be amazing. Yeah, in the, in the DBZ One Piece, okay, I'm trying to remember because I've done this math before. The DBZ One Piece Toriko, um, I think Eric Vale is, would be doing the most crossover because he would be Trunks uh, and the uh, announcer and Sanji. Yeah. Um, Sabbat fights himself in that one because it would be Zoro and Vegeta, which of course Zoro and Vegeta would fight. Um, and yeah, now, because for the longest time there was no... Toriko was, everyone in the Toriko cast didn't cross, nobody in the Toriko cast crossed over, and now I'm the one link between that, because Brooke's in there too, being a perp with Roshi, which is awesome. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I would love to do that. Dude, when I found out about those things, I called, I called my brother and I said, I'm gonna fight Goku, I'm gonna fight Goku. <laughs> I, I just, God, we gotta get those, man, I really want them. Um, 
Speaking of um, before what I was saying, I don't know. I'm, I kind of want to say, uh, it's Tori was good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like, man. I, I really enjoyed it from what I've seen so far. But I don't know. Now it's like, it, it's nice that, um, that you're getting to work on some shonen because. Because it's Funimation, it's a lot more, I don't know, I don't want to sound sexist, but a lot of it's targeted towards uh, females, I think. Yeah. Besides the fan service shows. So. <laughs> okay. I really enjoyed that. Actually, when I got Toriko, I, I remember saying a bunch, like, I'm going to have dude fans that I can talk to now. Because <laughs> it's all been, and, and I, I love my uh, my Italian Black Butler fans. You guys are awesome. Um, but there's there's something about being able to dude out about an anime and just be like, oh, bro, do you remember this? And and I got that with with Toriko, and that's been really cool. And and it is everything else I've done. Like like let's see here, Black Butler, yes, for the ladies, um, Hitalia, um, and like stuff like being Spice and Wolf. But Spice and Wolf is just generally a good one. I really like Spice and Wolf. Um, but yeah, no, the, these these two are my first like. Just go punch stuff and do awesomeness. And I gotta get one of those canes. Oh, sorry. Um, but now, one the, you actually played a very prominent role uh, early on in season four. You were Itomi Mizu. I had to make sure. I yeah. Saw that right. No, uh, it's Itomi Mizu. Yeah. Sorry, that's like a tongue twister for me. Let's talk about him. Uh, not not as he, he doesn't have too much depth like Brooke, but still, you probably had the most lines out of everyone else. I, yeah, no, I, I, I had equal uh, equal line counts to like the leads, and it was such a painful voice. Like mm. Brooke, Brooke lives here, here with 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 breathiness. It's a Mimi who kind of bounces off everything like that, and um, it was just screaming. It was screaming for weeks and weeks, and I honestly think that I was able to do Toriko because of Itami Mizu, because I blew out my voice, and I'd come in kind of sounding low, and then after that I just kind of learned to push it down even more, and then I'm sounding big. Uh, and I don't, I don't think if I did, didn't do Itami Mizu and showed Mike that, you know, I could, I could do large parts within One Piece and handle large line counts, I don't think I probably would have been broke. So I'm really happy for that one. And it's a great arc. It's, it's a lot of fun. And, and the voice is just different enough. I, I, I like that. My, my, I was worried that my other One Piece uh, characters would preclude me from being able to be uh, in there. But I think that was the right, right word. I don't know. It's a long day. Um, <laughs> but, but, I, but no, they're all different enough. And they, they assured me. I was like, I just did the one, uh, the um, Toonami stuff. And they're like, yeah. The Japanese liked it. Okay, thank God. <laughs> is it just for like the main cast, like the Straw Hats and the villains that uh, Japan looks over and approves of? Or I don't is know it... if they approve the villains. Mm -hmm. I think I think I think it's the main cast. You 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 have to and mm -hmm. and they their response was that I was very calm. They they're like he's he's very calm in this one. <laughs> we like it. He's, he's he's calm in this movie. We, we can, they were very excited to see what happens when I get all crazy because because in the movie he's. He doesn't, you know, get yeah. broke crazy. So, uh, now you mentioned before having the possibility of looking at a music career, but when I was just curious, when did you start to act, and when did you sort of transition into voice acting? Um, I, I did. I, I did high school theater, and then with the guys that I were in little metal bands with, like we were, you know, we go to theater, and uh, we did that, and then I was a theater major, and then. I, I've. There's no feeling on this planet like doing a rock show. There's just not. There's something about rocking out and screaming and getting this close to fans who are screaming the words right back to you, and you're sweating and you're sweating. And it's just the energy, and you scream and you jump up, and they scream. There, there's no feeling in the world like that. But theater got close, like. Because, I, I mean, it might not be that kind of chaotic, beautiful, cacophony, but it is, you can, there is still that energy exchange. So I said, oh, all right, I'll start doing theater. And I always thought the best film actors out there were really good stage actors, you know, Pacino's and all that kind of thing. And uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to be a good theater actor, and so I started doing that. But my, my nighttime job was playing in a jazz group for a burlesque show, and uh, <laughs> my pianist uh, was working at Funimation, uh, Dave Trosco, and he was uh, 
that's how I got into into all of it is because we were we were in a band and knew each other through theater. We knew each other through theater, which got us together in a band. And then he was like, "Hey, I'm gonna go do this. Um, I'm gonna do some Funimation. You want to come uh, watch me do it?" And then Sabbath asked me to do you know a line, and then that guy came back like six months later, and that's why I got a contract. And then, then because of that, I got comfortable on the mic, and I got better at doing all that. And then I, once I graduated from college, I was doing a lot of theater around DFW for, for years. And then after one of my shows, one of my guys gave my name to an agent, and I had done enough on mic because of being at, at Funimation that they were like, oh, we can use you for voice acting booked a couple of things and then that's been my sole job since and it's been it's I love it um, <laughs> you totally just did a brook pun without even knowing it <laughs> what did I say you said soul job <laughs> <laughs> oh and I didn't even make the skull joke yeah I like that I, I forgot about that in yeah. Strong Rules like yeah. oh I made a bone appropriate joke for once and no one was here to hear it <laughs> <laughs> what's the reception been like for this weekend uh what have people been saying to you? Uh, the, they've been so nice. I it's like it's scary. They've been nice, so nice. It's like I'm not a used. I'm not used to that because you normally get right off the bat. You get like, well, I, I prefer. The, but everybody's been just so great and like, I love it. High five. And my response is totally, oh, thank you. I was worried. And. And it's been great. Everybody's been really supportive, and and to do that with a role that that's as iconic as it is, and, and and people have such opinions about, is extraordinarily relieving. And like, I wrote home to mom. I was like, they really liked it. It's all good. <laughs> she's getting a Brooke shirt. I'm not kidding. Yeah, she's getting a Uniqlo like big old. Uh, nice. Yeah, giant <laughs> Brooke shirt. Awesome. I I've, I have brought her shirts from Black Butler, from Toriko, and she's just always like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She saw me in this one Brooke shirt, and she's like, I want that. <laughs> you got it, Mom. Get that shirt. <laughs> yeah, Uniqlo has a lot of shirts that come out every year, so. That's not, I got a, oh, I have a Gourmet Hunter shirt from them that uh, mm -hmm. someone gave me. So cool, so cool. Speaking of uh, Strong World, like, I've heard just, like, nothing but good things about it, and we actually heard something where, you know, someone actually who wasn't familiar with One Piece saw the movie and then bought all the sets that were at the Funimation No kidding! It's yeah. been over $300. Yeah. That's awesome! And Strong World is that movie to get One Piece, uh, get people into One Piece, so... Yeah. They're now a part of, like, something that's, like, this would be a great introduction to someone to the series. That's awesome. That's really awesome. What is Mike McFarland really like? No, uh, actually, you know, Mike is one of the nicest and like like best people I I know. And uh, honestly, not just because I work with him a lot. Mike and I have gotten really close, and I really like that dude. Like, that is a good person. And and you know, you don't always get that. And 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 I like him. And and I've I've done so much karaoke with him, which is <laughs> I think may have given me a little heads up because he because he's heard me do rock songs. Because uh, the only thing uh, on the audition, oh, I can tell you this about the audition process. Cool. Uh, there were lines, there was the laugh, and then it was sing something a cappella. And um, my 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 song a cappella was good. I think I I think my vibrato was a little low. I'm, like I I'm way too hard on myself. <laughs> But I, I, I think because he and I have rocked out <laughs> and and done like singing Tenacious D together that he like he, he knows that and he's talked to me about that. Um, he was he said something about that. They wanted to know if you can if you can sing and I go, I assure you he can sing. And and yeah, I I love that guy. I love that guy. What, what have been, what, can you remember any sort of the uh, the tips that Mike gave you like during directing? I know he's like I know we've heard stuff before like. Mike will say to someone, all right, yell. No, no, yell more. It's one piece. You know, it's, yeah. it's more exaggerated. I'm curious if he, cling on to anything. Uh, with me, he, he pushes um, breathy. He keeps me from sounding like Ian. There's, there's a part of me, the, the happy, innocent part of oneself that is buried by, by you know, the, 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 the awfulness that is the world. Um, that little joyful boy inside me is basically Brooke. Hi, how's it going? Let's have a good time. But he would sound like this in general, like, hey, how's it going? Like, ah, oh, you're a straw. That's awesome. 
And but uh, he has to remind me to add the breath he and the gentleman, and that's that's just his note. He just adds that to me, and and he doesn't. He's so he's so good about. He, you have complete confidence with him, because he's never going to take something that he doesn't think is awesome, and so you will do it over and over until it's it's right. And yeah, he'll there is no there is no too high. And he said to me, he's, we made the agreement really quickly right off the bat. He's, uh, I was like, you'll pull me back? And he goes, yeah, I'll pull you back. As in, like, I will go as crazy as humanly possible. You pull me back if I need to pull back. And he does. Like, sometimes I'll be a little too goofy. And he's like, okay, um, pull that back here. We're going to up the goofiness in, like, three lines. And then we're going to drop you into a low range here. So we get, you know, it's going to, like, yeah, to really give levels. And he's, ah, that dude's an artist. He's he's really good. I'm I'm so comfortable because even if you don't feel like you know that you're doing something right or whatever, he will not let anything slide because this is his baby and he does not let anything go by that isn't perfect. And I love that. That's it's extraordinarily comforting as an actor. Um, I think we've asked this for some of the other straw hats, but besides yourself, Brooke. Uh, who is your favorite straw hat? It keeps changing. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I'll tell you why, what I love about each and why each of them have been my favorite at different points. Um, Usopp was my favorite for a while because he's the only straw hat that is, like, Sanji's like, I'm going to cook the, all this crust. I'm going to be this great chef. And Zoro's like, I'm going to be the greatest swordsman. I'm going to be the pirate king. I'm gonna, uh, Nami wants to map the world. Like, like they, they have these things, but Usopp just he recognizes his faults and he wants to be a better person and he wants to be brave and he wants to be strong and that's so deep like like that's like he's he's human and i, I you identify with that and so that's what that and sunny straight is brilliant as usopp like how uh, i'm i i had to stop him uh after i started binging on one piece and go dude you're Amazing, <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, thanks, man." And I'm like, "No, no, 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 no! You're amazing. Like what you do with him is just so." And he really appreciated, it. and he was really rooting for me. He kept being like, "Did you get on the boat? Ah, oh, we're over. No, 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 you'd be great on the boat. Can't wait to have you." When I found out why Sanji uh, uses his feet, then he became my favorite. I was like, "That is so cool because he's a chef, and he's just, that's the respect for the thing, and because he's a chef, and it's another reason I love him." And it's Eric Vale, who's one of my best friends. So like, uh, and hearing Eric like put on the um, just he he I went to him a lot around when I got Brooke because I was very nervous and I wanted to talk to him about it. And he talked about how he like he's he said yeah there's there are these things that you you learn and they become your own and and like like he he learning how to do the Nami. Ah! Like he, he remembers having to like go through that and he's like, Yeah man, it's a it's a process, but you you'll get there and, and it'll be that. I just wanted to make sure that I obsessively got there before I got to the recording session. <laughs> so that's why I freaked out when told him. So then Sanji became my favorite for a little while. And Zoro is just a just kind of a badass. Mm -hmm. Don't don't let Chris know I said that. <laughs> don't make fun of me. Um Zoro's Zoro's I mean just he's the Han Solo. He's just really freaking cool. And now I know Chopper, because I just got through all that, oh my god. I fought myself whether or not I was going to tell Brina how much I love Chopper. And I was like, nah, sorry. it was their anniversary. And I was like, happy anniversary. You two are wonderful together. And Chopper is effing adorable. Fine, I'll tell you. And she's, and, and she's like, oh, I just heard Brooke. I love you. Blah, blah, blah. When, and then the next time I saw her, she ducked behind, like half ducked Aww. behind the doorway. <laughs> oh my god, that's so cute. Uh, and yeah, so I, I, I mean, oh, and uh, when Chopper went and got that mushroom, did you cry? Oh, oh. Did I, I welled up. I welled up. I had to, I had to kind of choke it back. Um, <laughs> oh God, yeah, yeah. I, 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 and I love Chopper, but I'm, but then again, throughout all of it, Luffy is so freaking cool. How she's able to make him, he's more of a dude and a boy than like anything I've done. He's like, hey, what? I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> That's what's gonna happen. She pissed off my friend. And I love that. He's so, I think that's the best Luffy I've ever done. <laughs> um, no, now, well, now they just brought that up. Uh, I know we're talking about Luffy, but 
I think that's one thing I have noticed about Colleen's performance uh, that's different from the Japanese. He kind of does sound a little more like that. He's a dude. Yeah. He's, yeah. A, he's a little dude. And, <laughs> and he's, he's such a beautiful, pure character. And, and I don't know. I think, I don't know if you guys have felt this by, uh, with all the One Piece that you watch, but like, do you get that like, I'm going to follow my dreams. Do you get that? Do you get that after watching a bunch of it? I'm trying, but yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, life isn't as easy of just. Well, I'll just get on a boat. Yeah, and just and do just, something. Just do something. But like, like it, it, it kind of makes me want to do that. And you're like, mm-hmm. I'm make some King of the Pirates. <laughs> <laughs> but there is no pirate king to be. And yeah, and you just want to. I want to go adventuring so bad. Yeah. You know, you just want to go out and adventure. So it's like, I have to go to the store. That sounds like an adventure. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> Let's do it and get in bear suits first. Why not? <laughs> but I think we are reached the end of our chat. But I would like to, you know, of course, I would like you to have any final words. Just in general. Uh, it's been really great getting to talk to y'all and to know y'all during this process. Yeah. Because. Uh, yeah, we haven't, like, we haven't seen each other too much, but. No, was, no, but I mean, I. I remember talking to you about Toriko. Yeah. I remember, I, I mean, I, I, I did listen to the episode once I was announced. I was like, oh, I was announced. <laughs> no, the funny thing is, uh, I remember saying this to you um, last year when uh, the whole Toriko premiere. I was like, hey, if, you know, it's like, if you, like, it, I wish you played like a big main character because we'd love to have you on. And I don't know. I, feel I like did <laughs> that for you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's going to be, oh, if that's like the, Autobi- the, no, I'm sorry, the biographical film of Ian Sinclair's career. That's going to be the moment that defined him. It's like, oh, it's ironic. Cause now you need to say, oh, you wish I was a billionaire. <laughs> and, then, yeah. and then I'll just give you a bunch of money. <laughs> See, that's how it'll work. The next year, there's just a video of us just, just <laughs> throwing up money <laughs> uh, Yeah, dude, I mean, that's been great. Thank mm-hmm. you. And, and I hope to talk to you all more about Brooke. Of to course. Brooke. To Brooke. Mm. Yeah. To One Piece. To One Piece. To One Piece. We'll see you guys next time. Uh, I'm totally peeking out your levels, aren't I? <laughs> I'm just gonna go like this. <laughs> yeah, that's why if I do the yo ho ho, I'm gonna have to like do that. <laughs> we have other microphones. Okay. Then when I found her, she was dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's not like it was your squirrel, right? Yo ho ho. Hi. <laughs> oh. All right. Um, I'm looking around at everyone else. <laughs> no, I'm just wondering if you guys have anything else you'd like to ask, say, what you want to know? question, comments. Which honestly, nobody knows about Usopp. This is actually the only time I think I've told anybody, and Sonny swore me to secrecy about that. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Wow, I, I can't believe what it's I heard. It's a bit of a minor. I, it's a it's, bit of. I mean, because, because, I mean, you wouldn't think so. But no, it's. Know. I, I don't think I'm ever gonna look at that man the same. Yeah. yeah. It's, here exclusively for you. Anyway, um... Deuces. Oh my god, he just said deuces. <laughs> no, because... That's the sign-off for his podcast. Yeah, yeah. Oh, awesome! Yeah. <laughs> uh, I cut.